Well, good evening and uh, welcome to uh, Freeze Baptist Church. Uh, with the pandemic uh, the way it is in our country and churches being closed, we're experimenting with uh, different ways to meet the needs of our congregation. Uh, Pastor Mark, for the last two Sundays, has done live streaming uh, worship service. And tonight, we're going to attempt to do Sunday school. So if you will, we're going to have adult Sunday school on Wednesday nights instead of Sunday mornings. As I just mentioned, uh, this is coming from the Freeze Baptist Church. If you're not familiar with, with us, uh, we're located in Grayson County, Virginia, uh, in the town of Freeze. Um, we're walking distance from the Freeze Post Office. We're across the street from Freeze Middle School, and we're next door to the Freeze uh, Methodist Church. So it's my guess, if you can find Freeze, you'll be able to find our church. And we encourage you to come to our worship services and our Sunday school classes as soon as this pandemic uh, passes by. Uh, for those of you who uh, don't know me, I'm Blake. Uh, I retired from the Grayson County School System after 32 years of service. 16 of that was in the classroom where I taught math and algebra and uh, some computer classes. Uh, during that time, I coached uh, middle school basketball, was an assistant coach in varsity football, uh, coached boys tennis, and I was active for a couple of years as a as an uh, assistant scoutmaster. And I teach here at the, at the Baptist Church uh, an adult Sunday school class. I've done that for almost 40 years. Now, that may sound like a long time, but really it's not. It's fun. I enjoy it. I think the, the people who come enjoy the class. We learn a lot. We, I learn right along with them. And uh, so tonight we're going to, like I said, uh, attempt to have a Wednesday night Sunday school hour. Um, let me see. The quarterly that we use is uh, the King James Version Adult of Lifeway. I enjoy that. I, it, it works well for me. Uh, the, uh, I like the format and the authors explain uh, the scripture well enough for me to uh, attempt to explain it to my class. Plus I use some uh, resource materials and occasionally I'll, I'll get my wife Kathy to be online and look up something for me or I can ask uh, what is her name? Alexa, but I can't write, when Alexa gives an answer, I can't write fast enough, so I don't go there very often, but I do do Google and, and some research work. Um, we are in the middle of six lessons, uh, and they're titled, A Holy Vocabulary Unpacking the Language of Faith. Well, in layman's terms, we're going to be looking at words that are common in the Bible, but sometimes don't mean what they do when you're out in the world. Let me, let me give you an example. Uh, last week's, uh, the last lesson that we had here in the church was on lost. Well, to me, lost is my cell phone. If I lay it down, I've lost it. And I lose it all the time. And my wife was still working, she hadn't retired yet, and I kind of kept the cell phone with me as sort of a, I've fallen and I can't get up kind of aid. And uh, uh, one time I lost it and I looked the whole house over. And so I called my mother-in-law on our home phone and I said, call my cell phone. And she said, well, why don't you call your cell phone? Well, I don't know my cell phone number. And I did try it once and the gentleman that answered was very kind. But when, when she called, it rang and rang and rang and it was in the cupboard in the bin where we keep the dry dog food. And I think when I bent over to get some dry dog food for our pets, my cell phone fell out of my pocket and there would have been no way I could have found that. And that to me, in the, in the real world, would be a definition of lost, but not biblically. When, when we were at the beach and our kids were small, uh, the beach was kind of crowded and we can't do that now, but uh, when we were there, uh, a little boy 
who wasn't too far away from us, I guess he was maybe four years old, yelled, Mommy! And 15 mothers jumped up and ran to that little boy. And one of the mothers took his hand and, and said, What's your name? And he told her. And she said, Are you lost? And the little boy said, No, but my mommy is. So, as you can tell, lost out in the, in, the, in the secular world it means different than lost in the Bible. Lost in the Bible means sin has separated you from God, and that's why today's lesson is on salvation, reconnecting, uh, because we're all sinners and are separated from God till we accept salvation through faith. So, if uh, you have uh, the the Bible study, please open open your yours to uh, uh, the session three on salvation. I'd give you the page number, but the adult teaching book does not match the student quarterly. 35. 35. Okay, it's on page 35 if you have that. And I know that a lot of people use this, uh, this quarterly because, um, well, I took my wife's car to um, Mount Airy for a free oil change because that's where we bought the car. And it took about an hour for them to give me that free oil change. And so I, I had been there before and knew that it took a while. So I used, uh, I took my quarterly and was reading the upcoming lesson and underlining things and making notes. And several people in the waiting room commented, oh, uh, we use that at our church. And the same thing happened when I had a, uh, a doctor's appointment. Uh, and I took my quarterly with me because when they call your name to go back, you still have to wait a while. And, and I didn't want to just sit there and uh, for 15 minutes wasted or 20 minutes or whatever it takes for the doctor to come in and see you. So I had my quarterly and several people in the waiting room commented on that. So I, I know that it's popular and, and a lot of churches in our area use that. Um, before I begin a Sunday school class, I always say a little prayer and, and I ask God to give me the words to say to make the lesson clear and understood and, and let the class uh, get from that uh, something that uh, they can hold in their hearts and, and use as they go out into the world to their daily routine. Um, and one of the things in, in those prayers on occasion is that, that our Sunday school numbers would increase, that my class would grow, um, and there would be more people that would like to come. And tonight, that prayer has been answered. But I can tell you up front, I didn't expect that uh, live streaming would be how I would have more uh, people than, than I normally do in a, in a Sunday school class. For example, if you've never been to my Sunday school class and you're watching now, I'm up one. And God has answered that prayer, but certainly not in the way that I thought that that prayer would be answered. God works in mysterious ways, and this is certainly a testimony to that. Um, today's lesson is, is on uh, salvation, and we're in Romans chapter 3, uh, verses 20 through 22. Now, if you watch Billy Graham Crusades, which are on uh, one of the religious channels, and I, I take that every chance I get and listen to him whenever I have time, he delights in that. Billy Graham will say, 2 Corinthians, you'll find that in the Bible right after 1 Corinthians. And in one sermon, he said Deuteronomy, and that's early in the, in the Bible, in the first few books of the Old Testament. Romans is easy to find. It's right after Acts, early in the, in the New Testament, in the Gospel. So Romans 3, 20 through 22. And if, if you don't have a quarterly, you can look, you can take your Bible and, and open to that page. Paul is writing to the Romans, to the church in Rome, and, uh, uh, well, he, uh, he encourages them, he prays for them, he brags on them, but he also corrects them. There are things that they are doing that they shouldn't be doing, they've backslidden often, and, and uh, Paul's a very intelligent man. Uh, I look at him often like, uh, with my class, I say he's like a lawyer. He, he uses big terms and flowing expressions. 
and he's sometimes hard to understand. So hopefully tonight, as we look through this, uh, it will be my task to better explain what Paul's trying to say in his letter to the Romans. Let's look at verse 20. It begins with the word, therefore, which means that he has made a point. And that point was in verses 1 through 19. Now, I read that, and it is cumbersome and, and wordy, but basically he's trying to get across the point that the Jews are not saved because of Father Abraham. The Jews don't have salvation because they keep the Mosaic laws. The Gentiles are lost. They, too, do not have salvation, our study word, because they make pagan idols uh, that can't even move unless uh, they move the, the God themselves. And then they, their rituals, their pagan rituals, are anything but, but uh, what God would intend in the way of a worship service. So Paul's trying to say no one is saved through the Mosaic laws and, and through paganistic rituals. Salvation is a gift of God. Now, oh, Let's look at it. So therefore, he's going to make the point that therefore, now that you realize you're not saved by your good works, by the deeds of the law, and that's the Mosaic laws, keeping the laws. There were 600 and some of them. And it was impossible for anyone to keep all those laws. Uh, therefore shall no flesh be justified any sight. Uh, in God's sight, you're not saved. You're not, you, your sins have not been cleansed. And justified, uh, to me, justified starts with a J, just like a judge in a, uh, in a courtroom. And you're on trial, and the judge hits the, the gavel and says, not guilty, and you're free to go. You've been justified, your sins have been cleansed, and you're right with God. And uh, the law will not get you there. You will not, you'll not have salvation by keeping the Mosaic laws. Uh, no flesh, neither Jew nor Gentile, uh, is justified in any sight by keeping the Mosaic laws. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. The law has a purpose. It tells you what's right and what's wrong. For example, if, it, if you have a one-way street, it says you go one way. Uh, Galax has several signs that say no U-turns. How many times have we seen people pull a U-turn on a four-lane highway? Um, as a teacher, I had classroom rules, and there was no way you could put up enough rules for the children not to find something uh, that, that they could get by with because it wasn't a rule. I did, uh, uh, when I was an assistant principal, I had to pull, had to, got to pull uh, lunch duty with middle schoolers. And one hot uh, September day, lunch, a little sixth grade boy decides he's gonna stomp on his milk carton and make it pop. Well, you can't do that if it's half full of milk. And so when he stomped on it, the little girl next to him, all dressed up with her clothes all pressed and her hair all fixed up, was splattered all over with milk. And she was crying. And so I let her and a couple of her friends, you girls are that way, if they go to the bathroom, it takes two. They can't go by themselves. One knows the way there and the other one knows the way back. But I let two girls go with her and clean her up. And I took the young man out in the hall and I said, why did you do that? And he answered, you didn't tell us we couldn't. Well, how many rules would you have to come up with for kids to behave? God gave us 10 commandments to go by, rules of living, to, uh, both uh, worshiping God and getting along with each other. And then the Pharisees come along and come up with 600 more to make sure you're keeping the first 10. It was impossible. So the, he's saying here that the Mosaic laws for by the law is the knowledge of sin. Now you know it's wrong, but it doesn't save you. You just know that it's wrong. Uh, but now the righteousness of God, the, the kindness, if you will, the holiness of God, the generosity of God, the giving of God, the grace of God, but now the righteousness of God without the law is explained to us, manifested, being witnessed by the law and by the prophets. 
the prophets would come and say, you're, you're backslidden, you're not keeping uh, the covenants, uh, God's covenant, the, 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 the commandments, the, the statutes, the, the laws, you're not keeping them, you're, you're breaking your covenant with God. Um, and the law is there to tell you that that's wrong, but no salvation. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all, that's Jew and Gentile, and upon all, that's Jew and Gentile, that's everybody, them that believe there is no difference. All are sinners. In Romans 3, chapter, chapter 3, verse 10, Paul really sums it up when he says, as it is written, there are none righteous, no, not one. Now, in Billy Graham's sermon, uh, message one night, he said, we're all sinners. You're a sinner. And then he said, I'm a sinner. All through, uh, it can't, comes from the sin from Adam, and we inherit that sinful nature. We're all sinners and fall short of the glory of God. So Paul, here in this first few verses is attempting to get the Jews and the Gentiles to understand that. It's a new concept to them. Uh, most of us, many of us, grew up in a church and we're very familiar with salvation as a gift of God through grace, belief in Jesus Christ who died and resurrected, paid the sin debt for us, took our place, that we would be right with God and have eternal life in heaven with him and inheritance as part of the family of God. It's a new concept to the Romans, and uh, he's writing this letter as a reminder of what's expected of them as members of the church. Let me take a look now at my notes to see if uh, there was something else that I wanted to say concerning these several verses. If any of you have any questions, I have a staff here working with me. <laughs> Uh, Pastor Mark is with me and my wife Kathy is with me and, and they can uh, uh, receive your questions and forward them to me and then I will ask Pastor Mark or my wife Kathy to give their opinion. Just, I always had Larry in, in my class and he was the answer man. Anytime somebody had a question, I would always say, Larry's the answer man, let's go to Larry. But if you have a question or you're, or you're confused in some way or you'd like to make a comment, uh, that's certainly welcome. We would do that in class if we were all together. Let's see. What else? Let me look at my notes to make sure that I don't overlook something that I want to mention at this time. Okay. I think I've covered it. So we'll go on to the next series of verses, which are uh, verses 23 and 24. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And that's what uh, Billy Graham said in his, in his crusade. We've all sinned. No one is, is righteous. No, not one. You know, and God, uh, when Christ was on the cross and he took on all our sins, God had to look away. He couldn't bear to look at, at all the sin. And we were all sinners and we come short of the glory of God. Being justified freely, and I just explained, being deemed innocent, not guilty, a sins forgiven, not a sinner, being justified freely by his grace, his love, his desire for fellowship with us, his blessings that he showers down, all are part of God's grace because he cares for us. Uh, his grace through or because of the redemption that is in Jesus Christ. And redemption means being bought with a price. Uh, if you're in the world, uh, that's how that would be defined, being bought with a price. I even looked it up, and it said something else, but I don't know that I can find it. Being redeemed is, uh, well, it's there in, in a notebook. The act of buying back. We were separated from God and by sin, and we're, we returned to God through the redemption of Christ, who paid our sin debt, bought back, I guess you might say, your eternal soul that is in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. All right. um, Romans 3, 25 through 28 are, the, are our last series of verses. 
the last part of our lesson, uh, I uh, sometime to make sure that I get it said the way it needs to be said, I sometimes read what the author says as a way to try and make my rambling sometimes more understood. And here's what the author says concerning those last two verses. Sinners remain guilty, condemned, helpless, and hopeless. Jesus Christ, in submission to the Father's will, voluntarily gave himself. And there's where the redemption of our sins comes in. Have we got any questions uh, coming in? So obviously you understand what I'm saying. Being a school teacher, I find that hard to believe. <laughs> And one thing that a teacher should never do in a class is say, everybody understand? Because they'll all nod yes, but no. What you do is you ask questions to see how much they do understand. But today that's not possible. And of course, to be honest with you, in Sunday school uh, classes, I just wait for, for them to volunteer something. I wouldn't, I think the first time I was called on in, in a college class, it scared me so bad, I forgot the question. Of course, the teacher didn't know who I was, it was, you know, 60 people. And when he called on Blake Sumner, Blake Sumner didn't answer because forgot the question. It scared me so bad. So I don't like calling on people, but I like it when you volunteer. And so if you have questions. Here we go in Romans 3, 25. Uh, whom, that's Christ. This is a continuation from verse 24. Whom God had set forth, it was part of God's plan from the beginning of creation to provide salvation for us. He knew that we would sin and that we would fall from grace. And even before the creation of the world, he had a plan of salvation in place. And that's what's being said here. Whom God chose, he chose his son, he gave his son uh, for the propitiation. And I used to have to say that on Christmas programs. I'd be up in the balcony and, and read scripture at Christmas time. And propitiation was a hard word to say sometimes. It means removing our sins, uh, to, uh, to be chosen, be ordained for a certain task. God chose his son for a special task before the creation of the earth. That's how much he loves us. He knew that we would mess up, but he had a plan to fix it. But with my grandson, he sometimes wants to uh, mess with some of my things, and uh, that's fine. But I'll, I'll say, like, when we had a BB gun, I, I, I bought him a rifle and didn't tell his mother for a while. That, that's not smart, by the way. And I said, okay, I'm going, I'm going to do it first, and then you do it. And so I would show him how to cock the gun and how to aim it and how to shoot it. And he was seven or eight years old, and then he would do it. So uh, God had a plan, and it was already in place, and he followed through so we could see how much he cares for us. Uh, whom God has set forth to be the propitiation through faith in his shed blood. And it's by faith. You know, a Dr. Frederick Price, uh, I can't find him on TV anymore, but uh, he was a dynamic uh, speaker and he would say, you are saved by faith, not by sight. And it's by faith in his blood Faith includes hope. Uh, they, they're talking now on, on the television about everybody uh, staying home, uh, self, what's it called, self? Uh, isolation. Isolation. I was going to say incarceration. <laughs> self, <laughs> thank you. Thank Same you. thing. <laughs> well, I mean, it's kind of like cabin fever, only different, because I think in cabin fever, you know, like when it snows and it's fun for a couple of days, then you want to get out and go to town. Well, now if you get out and go to town, you might get arrested. But when you get to town, it's closed. They're in self-isolation as well. But uh, uh, in that, they say that people that have been in self-isolation for a while get depressed. And uh, they have these doctors on TV that, that tell you, oh, you can, you know, watch some watch some sports on television. Well, to be honest with you, that's what I do. I don't remember who won the football game in 2004, but it's cute to see Joe, uh, Joe Montana or, or Joe Theismann or Jerry Rice. Uh, as a young person, I go, gee, look how young they are. 
And I even found Cousins, uh, uh, the Redskins, old quarterback that's now for the Minnesota Vikings. I found a Michigan versus Michigan State, and there he was, a junior in college. And he looked like he was uh, maybe 15 years old. But doing something like that to ease the boredom, uh, get out and walk your dog was one of the other things they said to help beat the depression. And uh, there was one more thing. I don't recall what that was. I didn't write it down, so therefore I can't remember it. But my point is, faith includes hope. Where there's faith, there's hope. Uh, uh, the things hoped for but not seen, something along that line. Um, they say that one way to beat depression is to have something to hope for. And uh, we have faith in God that it's gonna be all right and we hope that it's uh, soon. So the propitiation through faith, faith is, a, is we have to have faith, we have to have hope, we have to keep on keeping on. Uh, in his blood, he shed blood for our sins, his blood was shed for our sins to declare his righteousness for the remission or the removal of sins that uh, we've done in the past <laughs> through the forbearance of God. I look back and uh, my goodness, I stepped in a lot of potholes growing up. Uh, there's some things I'd like to go back and undo. Uh, I've asked for forgiveness, but I've been told sometimes that uh, God forgives us and sometimes we don't forgive ourselves. Uh, uh, they even had in Walt Disney just the song, just let it go. And sometimes through guilt, we hold on. But uh, here, it's uh, for the forbearance of God to, uh, from the past, and don't let your past beat you up, uh, through the forbearance of God, the, the plan to come, God toughed it out. Uh, I think if you have a teenager in, in your home, you're toughing it out. <laughs> One of my daughters told mom, told my wife, her mom, said, mom, you, you don't understand. The problem was, Kathy understood all too well, and when our daughter was older, she realized Hey, you know, mom's pretty smart. Same thing with me and my dad. We knocked heads a time or two. But as I got older, I, I really saw the wisdom in what he was trying to teach me. So through the forbearance, uh, uh, he endured our sins through his grace. To declare, to say to you, I say at this time, his righteousness, God's righteousness, his love for us, that he might be holy, just and holy, and the justifier, the judge who declares our sins forgiven of him which believeth in Jesus Christ. Now, I kind of explained that as I went through it, but notice if you're, if you're a Paul fan, what this sounds like if you just read it on its own. To declare, I say, at this time his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus Christ. And if I were to have a class, I'd say, okay, everybody take out a pencil and paper and give me 25 words on what that means. And you'd probably have a hard time doing that because that's the way Paul says things. But he declares to us at this time that God's love for us, that he will be justified or made holy and the forgiver of our sins through those that have faith that believe in Jesus Christ. I hope that makes more sense than the way I read it the first time. Where is boasting then? Uh, people that do good works, uh, it's man's nature to want to brag on that. I want to brag about the good things they do. Uh, I'm a past noble grand in the Independent Order of Oddfellows, and uh, I wasn't sure that I wanted to be a part of, of something like that, but uh, some of the brothers in the, in the lodge said the reason we're called odd fellas is the good that we do is never told. And man's nature is he wants to brag about the things he's done. And in the years that I was active in the lodge, we did a lot of good things for a lot of nice people, but no one ever knew that it was us. It's hard not to brag. Look at what I did, look at what I've done, but Who's boasting then? Can you boast about your salvation? No, because you don't have salvation. Can you boast about your good works? No, because 
Good works don't get you where you need to be. But a lot of people, and I, uh, I read that in one of my reference books, a lot of people think that if they live a good life and they do nice things for people, that God will reward them with eternal life in heaven. It doesn't work that way. You have to have faith in our Lord and Savior in order to have salvation and inherit the family of God. So where is the boasting? There isn't any. You can't brag on what you've done and think that God will be impressed by that and, uh, and bring you into heaven with him. It doesn't work that way. Is it excluded? Well, uh, no, because like I said earlier, you have to know what the rules are so you don't get into trouble by stomping on a milk carton. By the way, that wasn't one of the rules that was posted, but uh, boasting, no. Is it excluded? By what law? No, it doesn't come by law, keeping the Mosaic laws, or by what works? No, it doesn't come. Salvation doesn't come by good works. Nay, no, I tell you, but by the law of faith, believing in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, and that he died on the cross for your sins. Faith, salvation, a free gift. Ours for the taking. God's waiting. He's calling to you. That still small voice. Uh, therefore, we conclude that a man is justified, his sins forgiven, pardoned, by faith, which, like I told, told you earlier, includes hope. We have hope of eternal life. We have the, justified by faith without the deeds of the law. And that kind of, if, if you really want to get, get to the heart of it, that last verse, those last two verses, sort of sums up the whole lesson. Salvation by faith in Christ. Not by good works, not by pagan idols, not by keeping the Mosaic laws, but by faith in Christ. That's all I have in the way of tonight's lesson. I uh, thank you for taking the time to watch. Uh, I, it's my sincere prayer that something uh, that I said might make a difference in, in the way you think about things. Uh, hopefully we'll have another Sunday school class uh, next Wednesday. Uh, this is sort of a trial run, we'll see how it goes. If it works, we'll keep it. If it's not working, we'll tweak it. But uh, have a good night, and may God bless you all. Question? Sure. So are you saying you're an odd fellow? I, I'm inactive. <laughs> you're very much an odd fellow. Yes, don't thank you. And that was one of the reasons I didn't want to join, by the way. I didn't know what an odd fellow was until it was explained to me. Are we off? Are we off? <laughs> We're off.